What is up, Light Fam? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing the ego. Good or bad? Hero or villain? Uh, and we're also going to be discussing uh, some great ways that you can use it to your advantage. So let's dig right into the video. Alright guys, so if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Make sure you smash that notification bell uh, as I do post every week. And you don't want to miss any new exciting content that is on the way. Also, make sure that you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing with you a wonderful technique uh, on how to really keep the ego in check and use the ego to your advantage. All right, so let's dig right into the content. All right, guys, so let's start off with is the ego bad? Now, if you're new to spirituality, I'm sure you've come across several spiritual gurus that say the ego is a bad thing. And I have an issue with this on a couple of levels. Uh, firstly, there's nothing capricious in nature. You have an ego for a reason. And any time that you section a piece off of yourself and declare war against it, you get this internal fighting. Uh, you know, as they say, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So anytime you've got a piece of yourself that is an enemy or you're declaring it an enemy and you hate it, it's a part of you. So isn't that just self-hate? <laughs> you're never going to get any type of clarity or ascension if there's some type of a self-hate issue going on inside. Okay, so now all of a sudden, if you've declared war on some piece of yourself, you've got this internal dichotomy going on that is based out of duality. And I always say, duality is always the problem. Unity is always the answer. So don't declare war against any piece of yourself that you want to change, okay? That's number one. All right, number two, is ego good? Well, ask yourself, are you good? And this is a great barometer, by the way, of gauging your perception of self-worth. If the answer is yes, you are good, well, then the ego is a part of you, therefore the ego must also be good. If you answered no, you're not good, then you've got bigger stuff to work on than just the ego, and this is a, a, a great uh, time to begin your shadow work. Um, if you guys want to see a video on shadow work, leave a comment <laughs> in the section below, and uh, I'll get a video out on shadow work. Um, but yes, so the ego can be good, and in just a few minutes, I'm going to share with you guys a technique uh, that is going to make the ego a good thing and allow you to use it to your advantage. But first, let's we have to understand what the ego actually is. So let's dive into the ego's role. Okay, so what is the ego? The ego is our perception of our own identity. So it's it's the image that our surface mind has of ourself. So it's the labels with which we identify. Um, I am Canadian, I am American, I am liberal, I am conservative, I am Muslim, I am Buddhist. So um, it's our perception of who we are. It's not really who we are, but it's the label that we give ourselves. So ego's role is that of survival, it's the fight or flight mechanism. And when you're in fight or flight, you're in a state of resistance. You're not in a state of allowing. You can't receive the answers and the insight and the action that you need on a subconscious level because your heart is closed. Okay, so you make your decisions from a place of lack, of fear, of anger. That's the fight or flight. That's being in a mode of resistance. So in a previous video, which I will link right here, <laughs> uh, I said that the ego uh, is kind of like 
an advanced early warning system or like a radar that lets you know of little danger points or potential threats along the way. You want to view those threats from a space of neutrality, non-judgmentally, and adjust as need be. And that's how you keep the ego in its place. So what is the solution? Well, remember when I said duality is always the problem and unity is always the answer? So you want to think integration and not separation. How do you do that? Well, you raise the vibration of your ego. And a great way to do that is through meditation. If you need some pointers on how to meditate or you, you need some pointers on a good meditative practice, watch my video here on how to meditate. <laughs> so when you raise the vibrational frequency of your ego, you're raising the ego's vantage point. You got to remember the ego is viewing the situation from a lower vantage point because it's a lower vibrational center. But if you're keeping a solid, consistent meditative practice, you want to raise the vibration, really focus on the ego and intend on raising its focus, raising its vibration. And then the ego becomes a little less self-preservating, less self-centered. It perceives the concept of oneness and it will stop crying wolf when there's not a real threat and there will be less moments where it will stress you the freak out. <laughs> All right, so we don't wage war against it, we integrate it, we raise its vibrational frequency. One thing that you have to understand about the ego is that the ego does not know the difference between death and transcendence. So we've all heard the phrase on the other side of fear is freedom. So the ego tries to find its happiness in its little narrow box. It's, it has blinders on. It stays where it's safe. It stays where it's known, which is usually a narrow-minded, limited paradigm. And it doesn't know that on the other side, outside of that box, is more love, more abundance, more happiness, more freedom, more everything, joy of life that it could ever fathom. But it doesn't know that because its uh, role is survival. It doesn't know that on the other side of death is transcendence. And if you want evidence of this, just think back to a time when you took a chance, you took that risk, and it worked out better than you could have ever imagined. And now think about all of the people and the events and the experiences that you had that you would have never had if you had listened to the ego and played it safe by staying in the known. All right, guys, so I'm glad you stuck around to the end. Now it's time for me to share with you a technique that's going to allow you to take control of that ego, use it to your advantage, and keep your vibrational frequency high no matter what happens throughout the day. It is super important that you protect your vibrational frequency because wherever your vibrational frequency is, is what you're going to experience in your physical uh, reality. Okay, so next time that you are meditating, try this exercise. When you're meditating, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to envision your ego as yourself, but as a five-year-old. Okay, so you're envisioning yourself as a five-year-old. This is your ego. Okay, and so you set your ego down in your lap and you know you give it uh, a reassuring hug and you coddle it a little bit. And then you start to ask your ego some questions with love, right? What are you so worried about? Um, have we ever failed before? Or if you did fail, remember when we failed and it still worked out? Remember that time that we took a risk and everything turned out better than we expected? You can mold it to any uh, part of your life that, that you want. Um, Hasn't so-and-so talked behind our back at the office before, but yet we still got promoted? <laughs> you, get, you get the point, but you can, you can mold it to whatever fits your life, and now when something 
pops up that has the potential to affect your vibration in a negative way, you're going to have that visual in your mind of yourself as a five-year-old being the ego, and you just give it a little coddle, a little reassuring hug, and ask the question, is this a valid worry? Aren't we still going to be okay? You know, haven't we been cut off in traffic before, <laughs> and we still got to work safely and on time? That's a big one for me, by the way. Um, so uh, you can really mold this to fit your life. And then you give yourself that visual of yourself as a five-year-old that you can coddle, make, make it feel better, but you're the adult. You're the actual decision maker, and you're not making decisions from a place of fear, lack, and a place of resistance. You're responding. You're not reacting. All right, guys, in conclusion, the ego is neither good or bad. It just depends on how much decision-making authority you give it and whether or not you've raised its vibration by integrating it with love in your awareness or if you've made an enemy of it, which is making an enemy of yourself. So make sure that you make the right choice out there. All right, guys, light, love, and abundance to all that are watching and to all you love. Peace, guys.